are one of the many car manufacturers whose motorsport ambitions have really fallen away in recent years. No longer competing, of course, in the World Rally Championship, in which they were a staple component for so long. It's perhaps that because of that withdrawal, their current high performance road cars have somewhat lost their sporty edge. Think back though to the late 90s when Mitsubishi were at the absolute forefront of international rallying with this car, the Lancer Evo 6. At the beginning of the 90s, Mitsubishi were busy rallying with their gallant VR4. This was a turbocharged, all-wheel drive version of its mid-size road-going namesake. As the seasons progressed though, the competition pulled further away and the decision was taken to step back, take stock and come up with something altogether feistier and a little smaller. Mitsubishi settled on lifting the drivetrain from the VR4 and putting it into the road-going sedan, the Lancer, thus creating the Lancer Evolution. First homologated for the 1993 Group A Rally Championship, the road-going Evo made 244 brake horsepower, critically a handful more than its principal competitor, both on the forecourts and the rallying stages, Subaru's Impreza WRX STI. A little later, by 1995, we were blessed with the Evo 3, which finally started to take on that now iconic late 90s look with which we've since become so familiar. And it was with this car, the Evo 3, that Tommy Mackinnon clinched his first world title in 1996. Most revolutionary, however, was Mitsubishi's new active yaw control, which was initially developed for the WRC, but offered by the factory as an option for homologation purposes. Essentially, the car was fitted with a raft of sensors that would speak to the ECU and detect when the car would yaw and rotate from the rear with a pendulum effect. When that happened, it would break the outside rear wheel to keep the car slightly more in line and accelerating through the corner in a forwards direction for maximum efficiency. For 1998, Mitsubishi, still developing their car to Group A regulations, produced the Evo 5 and went on to claim their third consecutive World Rally Championship title. And then we come to this. The Lancer Evolution 6. It received many updates to the suspension and the running gear, featured new lightweight cams and pistons, and an overhaul to the cooling systems, along with those fantastic titanium alloy turbine wheels, the first ever fitted to a production car. The Evolution 6 received subtle style changes, the most recognisable being at the front where those huge fog lights were pushed far out into the corners to allow even better airflow into the intercooler. In the WRC, the Evo 6 would be Mackinnon and Mitsubishi's last championship title winning car. But what a car to do it in, the ultimate embodiment of those six years of constant development by Mitsubishi and Rallyart, their racing outfit. As per the Group A rules that they were still adhering to, Mitsubishi were obliged to build two and a half thousand of the lightweight RS models for homologation which they duly did. And this, I'm pleased to say, is one of them. I just love how hardy and versatile this car is. You don't have to be delicate with it. 
first thing you notice about driving this car is how much it hates going slowly. The differentials lock up and create this loud clattering sound. But once you get up into the hills, the roads quieten down and open up. You can really let it off its leash. And that's finally when everything synchronizes and starts to work so beautifully. Oh, 276 horsepower feels at least 100 more than that. And the chassis is just so taut and balanced, it can certainly handle another 100 more on top. I love the whoosh of the turbocharger. There is a little bit of lag, but it's kind of made up for by the, the twin scroll turbocharger. Definitely reduces lag a little, but there's still just enough to make you want to get buried into the throttle pedal nice and early before you really need the power to kick in on corner exit. as hardy, robust, and challenging as this car is. Oh, let alone as fun. Sadly, the Evo 6 represented Mitsubishi and Mackinnon's last and final meaningful contributions to the WRC, when in 2001, the FIA forced them to fall in line with the latest WRC regulations. That meant they had to adopt the larger platform of the dreadfully named Cedia. And that giant step backwards, combined with Subaru and Toyota's giant technological steps forwards, meant that it was all over after that fabulous four year championship winning run. for a lot of people the aesthetic image of rallying in the 90s but what it's about for me is redefining what we mean by the term a driver's car honestly you can keep your million pound hypercars because for me proper drivers need look no further than this 